Hey guys, Lynn here, welcome back to another Skyrim console mod video. It's been a busy day and this is my third video of the day. One previous mod video and my 15 cool facts, secrets and trivia video I had a lot of fun making. Not only did I learn a lot of stuff about Skyrim and its lore, I actually had a lot of fun spending time doing some more editing than I usually do in my videos. My mod videos usually like have 12 elements to them, 8 video clips and images, the commentary, the mod titles, intro and outro, that's pretty much it. The last video had 120 different elements to it, so I spent like 12 hours just editing it, but I had a lot of fun. Anyway, enough about that, this is all about mods, and so we're just going to jump straight to our first one. Our first mod is a small change to the house carls in the game. All the mod does is make it so each of the house carls in the game now come with gear that is appropriate to their respective holds. All followers are also given a shield from their respective holds as well, so if they're from White Run, they're given a White Run shield. House Carls will now use a guard sleep outfit when sleeping as well, including Hearthfire House Carls. And House Carls, like the followers, will wear their shields from their respective holds. A small and immersive mod to start us off with that's worth downloading. Next up is called ZZJ's Wardrobe. This is a mod that adds in some female armors to the game, including four sets of female armor in different colors and armor types. Each of the armor parts can be mixed and matched to create unique looks, and all pieces are simply craftable at the forge under the steel or hide categories. In terms of damage resistance, each of the armors is around steel, dwarven, or elven light armor ratings, so it's just pretty much standard damage resistance. However, they are really cool looking, I think. Especially these plate armors, I don't think there are very many armors in the game that are geared towards female characters. A lot of the armors are really, really big and bulky looking. However, these fit your character a bit more better if you're playing as a female. So I definitely think this mod is worth downloading and checking out. Remember, all of these items can be enchanted to make them better and refined as well, but only the standard armor parts, the cuirass, helmet, boots, and gauntlets, not anything like the trousers or anything like that. Our next mod is another small and simple one, but definitely one I would use. The simple mod adds a heavy armor hood for warriors who don't want to bury their face in metal, and in terms of damage resistance, it's a little stronger than the Daedric helmet. The hood is located in the Riverside Shack near Windhelm. The reason I like this mod is because now you can no longer wear the ugly helmets in-game that I really don't like wearing. But when wearing the hood, you also now get the benefits and perks associated with a helmet and having all pieces of armor equipped as well. Our next mod of the day is another small one but cool one called Facelight. All the mod does is simply apply a lighting effect to your character's face so you can see it way better, especially when you're traveling in the dark or a cave or dungeon. Also the light can be turned on and off by using a spell, so you can use it or not without having to return to the main menu to disable the mod. Next up we have summonable Shadow Mirror and Spectral Assassin spell tunes. The Shadow Mirror spell is a lesser power that works the same way as Avrak. Summon him or her for 60 seconds. If you're riding, he or she will stay until you dismount. Also, Shadow Mirror's stamina has increased to 500. Spectral Assassin is now available as a spell tomb as well and works exactly the same as when acquired from the Dark Brotherhood. The spell can be purchased from Fadinger, the court wizard in Whiterun. The mod also adds the spells Sunfire, Vampire's Bane, and Stender's Aura to be sold by Fadinger so people roleplaying as paladins can acquire them as soon as possible. A small mod, but a handy one, especially as not everyone wants to do the Dark Brotherhood, but still wants the stuff from it. There are a lot of Dragon Tweak mods out there, and here is another one. This mod tries to rebalance Dragon Counters to a tougher difficulty according to lore. So now, dragons are more powerful, respects of vanilla versions, dragons have new resistances and weaknesses depending by their nature, Dragon Breath is really tremendous though. The Breath is related to the Dragon Age, so older dragons have deadlier breaths. Dragon's elemental attacks, Fireball and Ice Storm are now deadlier. They also relate to Dragon Age, but have different effects. Dragon Bite is now devastating. Stay away from the jaws of dragons because their or physical attacks are more lethal. Dragon Quests are now more challenging. Dragon Tail Attack may now do a knockdown effect, so stay away from the dragon's tails. Dragons now have improved AI from the vanilla game, and there are two types of behavior, Magic Dragon Behavior and Melee Dragon Behavior. Also, each dragon, according to his nature, type, and age, have a particular set of shouts to use in battle. Each dragon, according to his nature, type, and age have a particular texture now as well, that were all custom made by various people. Dragons have a proper lore friendly name in relation to their age and nature. Alduin is really the world eater, a semi-god of incredible powers. And finally, lower level NPCs from level 1 to 9 have fear of dragons and flee away. Overall, a cool lore friendly tweak mod to the dragons of Skyrim. Our next mod is another mod tweaked by Spot Crates. This mod adds smelters to towns that need them, including Solitude, Riften, Riverwood, Marthal, Dawnstar, and Whiterun near the Skyforge. The new smelters are close to the blacksmiths for each town, so now it's easier to make your own ingots and save coin. Why is the mod needed and why are smelters useful? Well, first off, skill leveling. If you're a fighter, spell sword, thief, or assassin, you're not going to survive if you don't improve your weapons and armors. 
With this Metler, you can get the materials you need without spending money. For realism, for immersion's sake, it's simply unrealistic that certain blacksmiths have no smelter. Solitude, for example, is the Skyrim capital of the Imperial Empire, but it has no smelter. That just wouldn't happen. And finally, for convenience, you should be able to smelt things whenever you want to, and with this mod, you can now do that. Our final mod is a cool weapon and armor mod that adds to Skyrim a bunch of new things for dwarven characters or people who just like the look of dwarven gear. Well now you get a set of armor and new weapons related to them, but it's not as simple as crafting them at the forge. Here is some stuff you need to know about this mod. You will have to do the crafting of all ethereal items in the ethereal forge that you will find in one of Dawnstar's side quests, which can be started reading the book called Ethereum Wars. Also, the forge is the only place where you can smelt down the Ethereum ore into ingots. The Ethereum weapons and armor mod adds Ethereum ore and chunks that can be found in Dwemer storehouses or storehouse-like areas. You can also find them in Blackreach, inside a few buildings, and in Raldfar Deep Market. The Ethereal weapons are pre-enchanted and cannot be enchanted or broken through disenchanting. Also, if you complete the quest Unfathomable Depths, you will gain access to the Dwarven Power Armor Recipe and the Ethereal Bolt Launcher. So what do you get with this mod exactly? Well, the mod adds in a set of Ethereal Armor, including armor, helmet, boots, gauntlets, and shields, all of which is not too powerful. It also adds in dagger, swords, great swords, battle axe, crossbow, hammer, war axe, and war hammer. All of which are just pretty standard in terms of damage, but they look much better and they definitely are cooler than just the regular standard dwarven armor and weapons. Overall, this mod is a cool one. It adds to the game some new dwarven themed weapons and armors, but it adds it to the quest line. So in order to reach them and craft them, it's going to take you a little bit of time, which I think is cool. And this mod is worth checking out. Well, guys, there we have it. Eight brand new console mods for Skyrim Special Edition. Some for Xbox, some for PS4, and some are available for both. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe. I will see all of you guys tomorrow for more Skyrim Special Edition videos. See you all then.